year in the last two weeks of December, we celebrate the very best of the Soleri Report of that year. This week in our second report, we publish four favorites from our weekly interviews and special reports during 2018. Why is the world so out of balance? The primary reason is because so much of what is happening is secret, hidden behind the secret books and secret operations of banks and corporations under the umbrella of national security. When I was in New Zealand in May, I interviewed Amy Benjamin on the cost of secrecy. When family and friends ask, how could this be happening and me not know? Amy gives you what you need to explain how secrecy is engineered. How can invisible deep state run the government and operate major operations and finances outside of the law? Here's how. You've described direct secrecy and indirect secrecy. Yes. So just introduce us to the concepts of direct versus indirect secrecy. Okay. Direct secrecy is the word I used for secrecy that is uh, presented as such explicitly to the public. So think classified material, top secret stamps, classified congressional hearings and the like. We are told that the government is withholding information from us and they consider it to be secret. And they'll usually invoke some sort of reason that seems reasonable, like national security, uh, right. blah, blah, blah. And that's direct secrecy. If you talk to scholars in the U.S., um, secrecy scholars focus on direct secrecy. So they're looking at classified executive orders. They're looking at classified FISA court opinions. They're, of course, looking at documents that with, are withheld on secrecy grounds and that aren't released pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act and the like. And that's what they focus on. But I realized that there was a realm that the American public really wasn't allowed to see very well a realm in economic policy, for example, relating to our central bank, the Federal Reserve, and the realm of a lot of government activity that's been contracted out to private corporations, and then in the realm of political authority that's been given over to international institutions. Now, we really can't see much of what goes on in those domains, and that's what I call indirect secrecy. The secrecy effect is the same. We know very, very little about what goes on in these three contexts, but the secrecy label isn't being put before us, per se. Instead, other values are invoked, such right. as, for example, in the case of the management of the economy and monetary policy, the value invoked is that of technocracy. Well, you're not allowed to see because you'd really screw it up if you tried to get your hands right. on it. And you and, couldn't understand it anyway. So. And you wouldn't be able to understand it. So let the wizards of finance manage this for your benefit. And then in the case of contracting, well, we're going to contract out a great deal of governmental activity, not because we want to keep it secret from you, but because we want to take advantage of the so-called alleged efficiencies of the private sector and the cost savings that will result to the American taxpayer. But the fact is that when they outsource government functions, it's more expensive. It is more expensive. And also we really can't see what these private contractors are doing for a whole host of reasons. When I was in Europe last February, our videographer Robert Duper and I took a road trip from the <laughs> Netherlands to Switzerland to interview the present age publisher Thomas Meyer on the future of Europe. This is a wide-ranging conversation on how we build a human future. I find Thomas provides an inspiring antidote that restores our spiritual and cultural grounding. What is important is that I take responsibility to make sure I'm coherent. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, spiritual science allows people to go at things in a manner which not only keeps them coherent, but gives them the power to, as you said, for a moral man to affect mm -hmm. yeah. things. Yeah. Right. And so the opposition against this has to do with the reluctance to become free uh, individuals. Yes. And unfortunately, many people, they would uh, contradict you if you say that. If you say, I don't think you want to be free. They would say, oh, no, 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 I want to be free. Of course, everybody wants to be free. But freedom means individual responsibility and I think the wish to be free, the will to be free is not as widespread. Freedom is not a rebellion like in the puberty, right. it's only the freeing from something. Right, it's but taking responsibility and growing. Exactly. Right. And spiritual science or approaching spiritual matters that. with reason, with logic exactly. is a major 
contributor to making the pathway possible. Absolutely. Which leads me to a question yep. that relates to your subscribers and my subscribers, because they, I'm hearing from you uh, a similar thing that I hear, which mm -hmm. is um, you, it often happens to me that I'm having lunch or meeting with a subscriber who's a very intelligent, capable person who has a tremendous understanding of reality, but they have no one to talk to. They are surrounded. Yeah. yeah. They are surrounded yeah. by people who, who for a variety of reasons, right. want to believe the right. official reality, right. and it's lonely. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we find each other? We have to pierce the tunnels of loneliness, with the, with the conviction uh, there are other people, um, and one has to trust that one is led to them. Right. I mean, how meetings come together. Look how we meet. We yeah. meet. This is, uh, I think if you have this intention, this is like a magnetic. Right. I, you have to create it's, the intention. Then you have a, a magnetism in a positive sense. You right. will attract those people. And if you're not blind, we, you, you will meet them. And I think that's one of the most positive tasks we have, that we join forces with people who seem to be totally in different um, uh, walks of life, but they have in common love of truth, individual courage, civil di dis disobedience, as Soro called it. And I think they have to form a kind of a community uh, in order to prepare something like, you know, I, I feel some crisis or another has to occur. And that then afterwards, those people who, who link through the tunnels of loneliness are a certain force. Yeah. Those people in these other streams, of course, want to tell you always, oh, this is a, I don't know how the English expression is, Einzelkämpfer in Switzerland, lonely fighter, isolated maniacs like Lee Harvey Oswald. That's what they want to do with us. Right. And that's not true. That's why we organize conferences right. with these people. Well, I was talking earlier about the fact that the, you know, we were talking about the false flags mm -hmm. and, and whether it's the, the media, you know, the false narratives or the false flags or false science or what, you have greater and greater <clears throat> push to control a force which is volcanic mm -hmm. and it can't work. Yeah. And rather than just let things explode, my vision is you have these people networking so mm -hmm. that when things unravel, yeah. it can shift it in, an, in wholly unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. I was in France this summer when several of us sat down to watch Ulrich Groniker's documentary for the Celery Future Science series, The Wave Genome, Quantum Holography of DNA. This was a paradigm shifting experience for me. How could I have been so ignorant about my scientific reality? If you haven't watched The Wave Genome, please do. This is invaluable intelligence that will open your mind and open your heart. So without any material present, a phantom was recorded. And if the space in the scattering chamber is not disturbed, this phantom-like memory could be measured for up to a month. Think about that, that the presence of DNA creates not only its own coherent light field, but also makes an imprint onto the background of seemingly empty space and does that so clearly that the informational imprint, its state of order, was still retrievable hours and days later. That means that your own presence in the room will always leave its signature, its memory. And this is how it can be that a very loving or otherwise coherent person will leave their imprint in a house or situation for a long time. This could be defined as a form of entanglement of the biological atoms with the background field, thus manifesting as a non-local, namely literally not there, phenomenon. In terms of physics, of course, this requires the existence 
of some kind of vacuum field, something that was decried for a long time, but is now established as the concept of the zero-point fluctuations that quantum field theory embraces. The coherence or order of the DNA and, as Gayaev believes, the information coded in the spin states of the ordered particles interact with the zero-point fluctuations and elicit particle fields from the physical vacuum. It also indicates that the DNA molecule is transmitted as a single waveform, creating quantum spin interference patterns with the vacuum. An implication is that ultimately DNA could be transferred or transported, let us say teleported, immaterially and non-locally as a light or laser modulation. That in principle a quantum teleportation of biological molecules is feasible was shown already in 2003 by the group of researchers around Anton Zeilinger, famous for quantum teleportation experiments at Vienna University. They created interference patterns of heavy C60F48 fullerene molecules and in 2011 of even bigger molecules consisting of up to 430 atoms that demonstrated that even classical objects, molecules, have a type of wave nature. Before we look at the experiments and the phenomenal results that strongly suggest a wave nature of the biological molecules, such as the DNA in particular, let us try to create more of the scientific framework that will allow us to understand and describe what's going on. Whereas current genetic theory focuses on the 24,000 active coding genes in terms of chemistry, the new model regards DNA as a stable waveform of information that is not primarily acting through the molecular chemistry and composition, but through the oscillations and coherent acoustic and electromagnetic fields that the atoms and molecules create. There exists a complex interference pattern at the cellular and subcellular level, produced on the one hand by the mechanical or elastic vibrations of the atoms and molecules in the liquid crystal hydrogel environment, which would entail fröhlich-like wave patterns or phonons within the tiny tubes and cavities of the cell organelles, such as the microtubules, the mitochondria, the electric dipole lipid membranes, or in the geometry of the DNA macromolecule itself. These vibrational interference fields can overlap and produce standing wave patterns of microsounds or acoustic waves inside the cell. We are daily buffeted by a fundamental reordering of institutions and culture wars encouraged by the establishment. Maintaining our coherence in the middle of the chaos is becoming an art form. I asked Harry Blazer to join me for discussion about how to do this called learning to walk about. So we sat in my den in Hickory Valley and here's the result. We are facing multiple tsunamis of change that are coming all at the same time. And it's not like mom and dad are up there planning for this to go right. So one is the rise of Asia. We just did the second quarter wrap up on the rise of Asia. The second is the reshoring of capital to the United States and a shift to a multipolar world. We talk a lot about that on the Solaria Report. Another, I believe, is you're seeing a real move in the United States to privatize a tremendous amount of government operations. So all the corporations that help create the negative return on investment, you're gonna double down <laughs> negative return on investment. 
But the biggest tsunami is the one that you've done the most work on the Solaria Report about, and that is AI. Deep learning AI is rolling out at high speed in multiple systems across the society. And I don't think anybody's ready for it. I know I'm not ready for it. I'm just trying to understand it. You know, you and I called it the AI invasion. And I think every aspect of our life is going to be invaded by AI. And we can't fathom what this change is going to be like. But one of the rules of thumb I always use is an expression from scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but not yet seen. And you hear this a lot when you listen to the interviews we've done with John Rappaport. The building block of reality is created from a cement called faith. Many of us are trained to believe we have to understand where the world is going and, and align ourselves to match it. So align with the primary trends, which is fine. But the reality is our world is created through our faith. You have to, and I've told you many stories about where I was told it was hopeless and I had to go along and I said, well, I'm not going along. You know, so kill me. Wait, I'm not going along. You stand on faith. Faith is the substance. It's the building blocks of reality. It's our faith. And you have to operate by faith. Now, if you spend a lot of time in rural America, what you discover is Americans really operate on faith. Oh, you know, it'll all work out. You know, not because that's the clever thing or the smart thing. They operate on faith. You know, I love my mayor, as you know. We were just overseeing the Hickory Valley Cottage, and every Sunday he would he would open up church with a Bible reading and say, just remember, something good's going to happen to you today. You know, that's the pluck of the American spirit, right? That's faith. And what I see with a lot of the attacks on the general population, they're trying to take away your faith. And you can't, because the faith is the substance you produce that creates your future. If you let someone take away your ability to create that, you know, Sir Rappaport calls it imagination, and he does his imagination exercises, he's trying to teach you how to invent your own reality. If there are three things you have to protect, it's your faith, your hope, and your love. Because those are the ingredients that you use to create your future. And, and so part of this is a battle between the AI and your faith-creating abilities. Now, the AI can't take that away from you. Only you can shut that down. But you have to nurture your faith and your ability to create the building blocks of your reality. And also those are three qualities that AI doesn't have. They're right. distinctly human qualities. So what we're looking at is really an other and a human. Yes. And so this is a way that we can protect humans. Right. And assure that they have a place in the future. Right. And so what we're trying to do is find a way for my faith, hope, and love to connect and nurture your faith, hope, and love, and vice versa. One of the reasons you have to take this down to people of integrity is you can only do that with people of integrity. It's dangerous. Amy Benjamin on the cost of secrecy, Thomas Meyer on the future of Europe, Ulrich Kroniker on the wave genome, and Harry Blazer on learning to walk about. These four selections give you an opportunity over the holidays to connect with some of the most inspiring people I know. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure working for you this year. On behalf of the entire Solari team, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and happy New Year.